Hey guys, this is a quick video review of Leatherman's new multi-tool, the Leatherman Arc. There's a lot to cover, so let's dive right in. Hey guys, my name's Adam, and today we're doing a quick video review of Leatherman's new multi-tool, the Leatherman Arc. I'm really excited. This is the first new premium multi-tool that Leatherman has come out. Uh, within quite a while, at least for the production side. They do have their custom shop. Um, but it's a really cool multi-tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbox it. We're gonna go over the size and weight and then all the features and then some of the pros and cons I think this particular design has. But overall, I think um, you guys are gonna like what we're gonna see. So let's go ahead and just unbox this thing. And uh, you know, you have your uh, warranty information and instruction booklet, which you don't need since we're watching this video. You'll know everything there is to know about this multi-tool. You get the arc itself, which comes with a pocket clip, which I really like. And it's uh, just a very nice, smooth multi-tool. Putting the tool to the side, we'll deep dive that in just a minute. Let's go ahead and take a look at what else is in the box. We get a wonderful sheath. I really like it. It's a nice, durable nylon sheath. Has a um, kind of snap button on there instead of the Velcro. I really like that. The Velcro tends to get gummed up with uh, you know dirt and debris. The snap button just feels a lot more secure. On the sides of the sheath, you do have loops for you know pin lights, pins, or even just uh, some of the drivers that you can buy for um, the Leatherman tool itself. And then on the inside, you have a pocket in the back for your bit kit. And then there's also a pocket in the front for your bit kit in case you have an extra bit kit or you need some different bits than what's included, you can buy an extra kit and they just slip in like so. And then when you need it, just pop it out. So I really like the sheath, I think it's one of the better ones Leatherman has made. Um, I've seen it before, but I've also seen some of the uh, Velcro style ones that, on the back there's also a nice size belt loop so you can attach it to your belt, your pack, or however you want to carry it. The bit kit itself comes with a nice assortment of some square, hex, torques, and uh, Phillips and flathead drives. So depending on what you need, this bit kit probably has you covered. Um, Leatherman does sell additional bit kits with more options if you need something different. So that's the bit kit, pretty simple. All right, with the unboxing out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the size and weight of this tool, and then we'll cover the features. So the length of this tool is gonna to be right at 4.25 inches long. The width is 1.3 inches wide. And then the thickness, not including the pocket clip, is 0.68 inches. So overall, the size is very comparable to the Leatherman Wave, which is a very popular multi-tool for Leatherman, and I think this is gonna really be a nice replacement for that multi-tool. As far as the weight, it weighs in at 8.6 ounces, which in your hand feels like a proper tool, but isn't overwhelmingly heavy or anything like that. It's a, it's a nice size and weight. It feels like a proper sturdy tool without being overly heavy and bulky. The tool itself is super smooth to use. You can um, deploy it one-handed. Uh, there's a magnet in the very base here. You just separate that. And almost like a belly thong there, you can just pop it right open. And then, you know, when you're done, you just Boom, one hand. So everything about this tool is one-handed. I will be using multiple hands in this review just to uh, make it a little bit easier to keep in frame, but just so you can see, I can get all the implements out one-handed. So that's really the big selling feature for kind of the free platform, if you will. Um, Leatherman's really going all in on the one-handed um, usability of their multi-tools. So let's go ahead and take a look at the outside features, the major tool, and then the secondary tools. So as I pointed out earlier, there is a pocket clip. Um, you can just unscrew it if you don't want it. Or if you're a left-handed person, they included an extra set of screw holes on the other side of the multi-tool, which I think this is actually the first multi-tool that Leatherman has done that. So kudos to Leatherman. They're finally looking out for their left-handed partners. So uh, that's really cool. Um, I do like that the pocket clip is included. A lot of their multi-tools in the past did not come with the pocket clip. That was something you had to buy separately. So it's nice that it comes with this. On the bottom here, we have a nice flat section on the base of the plier head. Um, as you can see, when I pull it apart, the plier's right there. So on the base there, it's kind of a, a hammer, if you will. So let's say you popped open that pan of cane. You can just go in there and tap things closed, hang pictures, uh, tent stakes, all, you know, the hammer will have lots of uh, uses. So I do like that there's a nice sturdy section of the tool that can you kind of use to beat on. Comparing that to the Leatherman Wave, um, you can see the base of the pliers there are not flat and it's actually kind of rounded with some weird edges. It'd be really hard to uh, hammer things with this. Where on the Arc, that's not a problem. So that's it for kind of the exterior of the multi-tool. Let's go ahead and start looking at the outside tools. So first up is gonna be the knife blade. And I'm sure that's what everyone wants to see first. 
This is a new MagnaCut steel blade, which is coated in DLC that gives it a really nice kind of finish to it. Um, now, MagnaCut is a corrosion resistant steel, so this doesn't necessarily need to be coated, but it does look pretty cool and is gonna make the blade a little bit more durable. The machining on this is really good. If you look at the edge there, it's a nice even cut and it's just a really nice shaped blade. It's 2.6 inches long. And it's kind of a sheep foot style. So you have a really nice long and flat belly, which I really like the shape of it. And being at 2.6 inches, this should be legal in most areas of the United States. Um, so A plus on the knife blade. Um, to close the knife blade, you have kind of a lever back here and you just close it. And um, the other thing I want to point out is there is a thumb stud on the knife, knife blade, which I really like because it makes it feel a little bit different than the other tool. So all the other tools like this one here, you can see have the uh, thumb hole. The knife blade itself has a thumb stud. So that does a couple things. First, it's a little bit quicker to deploy, but it also feels different. So if you're fumbling around in the dark or if you're busy looking at something, you can easily tell which uh, tool is the knife blade because of that thumb stud. So really like that. So great job by Letterman on this new knife blade. Um, this is the first multi-tool that I'm aware of that has the new MagnaCut steel. So again, if you're looking for something premium, Leatherman is gonna be your go-to option here. So putting the knife blade away, let's take a look at the tool on the other side of the same handle. And this is the saw. And Leatherman has always done an excellent job on their saw. Really wicked serrations and um, just what you have come to expect from Leatherman. Um, not really much else to say about it. It's, you know, a traditional Leatherman saw. Going to the other handle, we have a file, and uh, I really like this file actually. One side is kind of just the uh, coarse metal uh, crosscut. The other side is a nice diamond file, which a lot of multi-tools don't have the diamond file. And even the uh, free P4, which this tool is loosely based on, did not have the diamond file. And on the uh, cross cuts, they didn't come all the way to the tip. They kind of left a flat, smooth spot at the tip there, which is kind of annoying when you're trying to use a file to have a dead spot. So they fixed that. And then on the very bottom edge here, you do have cross cuts, which is great for like slot cutting screws that have been stripped out and things like that. I really like that they uh, have the cross cuts on the bottom. They use a kind of like a metal uh, saw. Um, overall, really like the file. Don't have a lot of other things to say about it. It's, you know, if you find a sharp metal edge on your car door or something like that, you have the nice diamond file to smooth things out in a pinch. Putting that away, let's look at the final exterior tool. And that is gonna be the scissors. And um, I'll be honest, I kind of wish instead of the scissors, they put a serrated edge blade in here, but that's just because of my personal use. I know a lot of people really like the Letterman scissors. And uh, these are a really good pair of scissors. They're nice and snicky. The spring seems to work really well. They're a little bit bigger than the wave scissors, but they're not nearly as chonky as like the Letterman serge scissors. I think it's a nice compromise for the size of multi-tool we have. And instead of having to open the tool up like you had to on the wave to you know, pull it out, it's right on the outside, super easy to get to. So that's it for the major tools on the outside of this multi-tool. We have the 2.6 inch magnet cut blade. We have the saw, we have the scissors, and finally we have the file. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other secondary tools that this multi-tool has to offer. And I think this is where um, you're gonna see some big improvements over like the P4, for example. So first is we have a flathead screwdriver slash cap lifter. Um, it's going to do everything that a flathead screwdriver and cap lifter will do. So um, that's nice. Um, I do like the size of the flathead screwdriver. It's perfect for prying open paint cans and things like that. Um, so it makes a good prize so you're not using your knife blade. Last thing you want to do is break the tip off of that lovely magna cut blade. Next on this handle is the eyeglass screwdriver. And um, not everyone wants eyeglass screwdrivers, but I find it super handy. Um, even if you don't wear glasses, this is great for uh, like battery doors on uh, you know small remotes. It's good for you know gun sights. It's good for um, just a lot of kind of smaller finicky work. The driver is double sided. It comes with a flat head and Phillips head drive. You can replace it with uh, some different options from the Leatherman website if you need something else. So the eyeglass screwdriver seems to come in pretty clutch for me because that's not something I really carry in my tool belt. So when I really need a small screwdriver, my Leatherman tool is the only tool that I have that will do that job. And then the third tool on this handle is the awl. And everyone seems to like awls and I'm one of them. Um, the awl has a really nice sharp edge. It's great for cutting open packages, punching holes into things, drilling holes in the wood. You know, the awl is just one of those kind of versatile tools that you find yourself using frequently. 
I personally like using the awl, especially when it has a sharp edge like this, for you know cutting the straps off pallets, things like that. Um, you can really get under there and just you know cut that plastic strapping on uh, items that have been shipped to your facility. So I really like the awl. And then I do wanna point out on the inside here, there is a wire stripper. Uh, so you don't need to use your knife blade to strip wire too. You just put the wire in there, put your thumb on it, and then you pull the sheathing right off it. So flipping the tool over, we have uh, two tools on this side. We have the can opener and the bit adapter. And uh, let's just take a look at the can opener first. It's um, pretty much what you expect. It's a can opener. <laughs> um, I don't use a can opener that often, but this does work good for you know scraping. It kind of comes to a nice little edge there. So it works good for scraping things off like glass or uh, you know if you got a sticker or something on something plastic. I kind of like to use a can opener. It's not so sharp. It's going to cut the thing you're trying to scrape stuff off of, but it's um, you know I don't mind if it gets gummed up or something because I don't really use it for a lot of other things. It does have a pretty nice little uh, fine tip on there, so you could easily use it as a, a flathead screwdriver as well. Now I do want to point out compared to the Leatherman Wave. Um, the Wave has like this kind of eagle claw foot style kind of can opener. And this is more of the uh, Victorian Knox style can opener, which I know a lot of people really like. So uh, they kind of switched up the can opener style. Not really sure why, but I, I do like this type of can opener too, so I don't have an issue with it. And then switching to the final tool, we have the bit adapter. And I really like the bit adapter. Um, I wish they had put it on some of their previous, like, uh, free P4 and uh, free P2, but they didn't. But you do get it with the Letterman Arc, which I really am glad to see because um, in my career, I use a lot of Torx bits for uh, computer hardware, server racks, and stuff like that. And uh, you know, if you just have the Phillips and flathead drive, that's not very helpful. But I can put the Torx heads in there and have exactly what I need for my job. Maybe you use a lot of square heads or hex heads or something like that. Um, you can get the bit that you need out of that bit kit and put it in here and it'll always be with you when you need it. So I uh, really do like that. I also do want to point out that this um, bit adapter is different than the Waves bit adapter. The Wave has a much kind of beefier looking bit adapter. I, I think this one's going to work really well. A lot of the extra material on the Wave is for that uh, kind of finger notch so you can get your fingernail on there and they basically just kind of shave that off the back side here to give you a little bit slimmer uh, profile. The same bits will work with the Wave, Charge, and Arc so you don't have to worry about getting new bits or anything like that. I just want to show you that the bit adapter had been redesigned. Last but not least, let's take a look at the pliers. Now, um, they come open really easily, but they don't just fall open because of a magnet in the handle here. You have to kind of break that magnet first. And as you can see, that ha handle just swings freely. So if you give it a little flick, it just locks into place, just like a kind of a, a ballet song type uh, knife. So I really like that. And then to close it, kind of same thing. You just, you know, boom. So super easy to use one handed and um, it's a very smooth set of pliers. Now the pliers are not spring-loaded. Um, I kind of wish they were, but that's okay that they're not. Most of Letterman's tools are not spring-loaded. I think the only one that was was their um, one-handed kind of flick the open style uh, set of pliers. However, the uh, needle nose pliers are really well done. Um, I like how they touch at the very tip um, and they don't touch back here, leaving a gap at the tip. So that makes it easier to use when you're trying to work with small items or really thin items. So I like that. The plier grip section here has some nice uh, aggressive teeth on it. And then just like a lot of Leatherman's newer products, we do have the removable wire cutters in case you damage them or something like that, trying to cut the head off a nail or something you maybe shouldn't be doing. No worries, you didn't just damage your expensive multi-tool, you can replace the removable wire cutters. So all in all, everything you've come to expect from a pair of Leatherman pliers. The overall fit and finish on this is just excellent. There's no uh, unnecessary sharp edges or machine marks anywhere. It's just very intentionally thought out. The edges that need to be smoothed off are smoothed off. The edges that should be kind of sharp and uh, usable are you know, the way they should be. So I really like that. Um, and just some of the little touches, you know, you got Leatherman, USA, forged right into the plier heads themselves. On the inside of the handle, it says built with free technology. Um, just, you know, a lot of attention to details. And, you know, that's what you get when you buy a Letterman product. The tool is built the way it's supposed to be built and not just slapped together. And being a Letterman product is an American made product, which just, you know, gives you a little pride pulling it off your tool belt and putting it to use. All right, guys, so that was my quick and dirty overview of Letterman's new multi tool, the Letterman Arc. Um, so, what are kind of the pros and cons of this tool, and um, would I recommend it? So, um, you know, first, there's a lot to like about this multi tool. The pliers are super smooth, um, everything is one handed deployable. You just use your thumb and spread out the tools you need. 
select you want, one you want, and away you go. So as far as like ease of use, A plus there. Um, I really like the Magna Cut knife blade with the thumb stud. It's super easy to deploy, and having that premium uh, steel is going to be really nice. Um, if I'm a heavy user in multi tools, and having a high quality knife blade that's going to last a long time between resharpenings is a must for me. So A plus there. Really just I love that thumb stud too. It just you know pops right out, no problem. And then that lever to unlock it once it's locked out it just just works really well. Really digging it. I like that it has the pocket clip that's also invertible, so it's good for left and right handed users. And it just comes with all the tools that you actually need and not a bunch of extra stuff you don't. Um, I noticed on some multi-tools, I'll put like six different sizes of flathead screwdrivers on and call it six different tools. And oh, there's a ruler because it's printed on the side of the screwdriver or whatever. And um, you don't have those gimmicks with this tool. It's uh, actual practical things that you'll actually use on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, it's a tool that's meant to be used, not a feature stuff tool to fill a spec sheet. So I really like that. Um, a couple of the cons, um, and I'm really nitpicking here, but again, I'm a gear reviewer, so I have to, is um, the pliers aren't spring-loaded. I kind of wish they were. Um, not everybody likes spring-loaded pliers, but I think that would have been a nice touch. Personally, I don't really have a use for uh, scissors on my multi-tool. I would have much preferred a serrated edge blade to help protect that magnet cut blade when I'm cutting through things that I probably shouldn't be doing with a premium knife. Um, that being said, I know a lot of people really do like the scissors and that it's gonna get a lot of use for some people. The final con that I'm gonna complain about is the file. Um, I really like the diamond coating. I really like that the serration come all the way to the edge. The only thing I don't like is that there's a hole on the side of it. And I just feel like if I'm trying to file on the edge of something, that hole is going to be kind of something that can, you know, catch on corners and things like that. Maybe make it a little bit more difficult to use. Um, not a big deal, just something to think about. Um, certainly not a deal breaker. So, would I recommend the Letterman Arc? If you're looking for a premium multi-tool, I would 100% say yes. This is an excellent multi-tool with best-in-class knife blade steel and best-in-class features. I would highly recommend it. You won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button below. It helps the channel out a lot. And don't forget to hit the subscribe and bell icon so you're the first to be notified when I release new videos just like this one. Cheers.